Well, hey everyone, and welcome to our physics homework tutorial. Uh, we hope you find this tutorial helpful in your study of physics, and if you do, please visit our website at www.physicsvodcast.com. There you're going to find over 200 physics examples in every topic of physics. Uh, it's sure to help you get through that physics homework. We'll see you then! Sioux Falls physics teachers and today we're looking at interference from thin films. We have a thin film of oil and value of 1.5 on top of a pool of water and value of 1.33 and we are to determine the minimum thickness of the oil at a point where the reflected light appears blue. Now remember our first rule of thumb for any thin film problem, and that is to draw the layers involved. So I've already started a diagram over here. Uh, we would have oil on the top, and then water below that, and then of course above those both would be the air. Also notice that we probably want our end values 1.5 for the oil, and 1.33 for the water. Now the first thing we want to do is determine what value we will want for M. And to do that, we want to look at how the rays of light behave when they encounter these new mediums. So suppose we have a ray of light that is first coming into the oil. As it strikes the surface of the oil, it is going to reflect back offwards and notice here then that if we compare air, which would have an end value of just one, and we compare that to the oil that is sitting underneath it, that the oil is a medium that has a higher index of refraction and therefore a slower velocity. This boundary here from the air to the oil then would behave as a fixed boundary. And the important part about a fixed boundary is that this ray of light then, as it reflects off of the oil, would invert. Now until we actually look at our second ray, uh, we still don't know what our M value is going to be. For our second ray then, we would look at a beam of light that goes all the way in to the oil, strikes the boundary between the oil and the water, and reflects from there. So now what we're interested in here is our N values between the oil and the water. If we compare those two, we see that the N value for the oil is actually higher. So when that strikes the boundary between the oil and the water, the water then will be the medium that actually has the faster velocity between the two. And so that boundary there will actually behave as a free boundary, which means, if we think back to our properties of waves, when a wave reflects from a free boundary, it remains upright. Now, neither of these pieces of information is going to do us any good by themselves. But if we compare them together, we can see what we want for our M value, um, or in other words, the number of extra wavelengths that we're going to need. We want to know a point where the reflected light appears blue. By them saying it appears blue, that means we want to actually see this blue light, and that means that this would be giving us constructive interference. Well, in order for us to have constructive interference, we need a situation where the two waves are in phase with each other. At the current time, we have one wave here reflecting inverted, and the second wave reflecting upright. In order to get those two back in phase with each other, we're going to need this second wave to go through half of an extra wavelength. By going through half of an extra wavelength, any points where this first ray is at crest 
will now be lined up again with where the second wave is also at a crest. Uh, notice that if we just put on exactly one extra wavelength, we'd be right back where we started. So right now they are not in phase with each other. By adding whole numbers of wavelengths, we would keep them not in phase. But if they begin not in phase, and we add a half a wavelength, then we allow them to become back in phase. So the end result then is that for the minimum point at which this constructive interference is going to occur, we need an M value of 1 half. So now that we have the M value, we'll go ahead and write out our basic equation that we will be looking to use. And again, much of it starts uh, very similarly to the interference equation for double slits, except that rather than look at D sine theta, instead, remember we are looking for 2 times the thickness of the film. So 2T equals M times the wavelength. Now before we put in our equation, uh, we do need to talk a little bit about the wavelength because remember that that is the wavelength of the light within the film. And in our situation, the film where the reflection would be occurring would be right in here. So it is the wavelength within the oil that we need. We are given the wavelength of 475, but that's the wavelength of it in air. So we need to do a little bit of work here to figure out what that wavelength in oil will be. To start with, I notice that we know the N value of the oil is 1.5, and we also know that N is defined as being C over the velocity. If our N for the oil is 1.5, C is 3 times 10 to the 8th. And so that means that the velocity of light in the oil is going to be 2 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. Now we also know that the frequency of light is constant. And frequency can be calculated as velocity over wavelength. So if we take the velocity and the wavelength in air, that ratio should be the same as the velocity and the wavelength in the oil. Now that we know the velocity in the oil, we have all of these values. So in air, we have 3 times 10 to the eighth for the velocity. The wavelength in air is 400 and 75 nanometers. And notice because I'm just setting up a ratio, I'm going to go ahead and leave it in nanometers for now. Then our new velocity in oil is 2 times 10 to the 8th. And our unknown wavelength in oil can be solved for. We find then that the wavelength of the light in oil turns out to be 316 nanometers. Now we have determined both our M value and our wavelength in the film or in the oil. And so we are finally now ready to go back and look at our equation. 2T, T being our unknown, is equal to 1 half times the wavelength of 316 nanometers. And if we solve for T, we find a value of 79 nanometers as the thickness of the film. So what this is referring to then is the fact that this oil right here at 79 nanometers thick, light would reflect off of there and provide the blue. Again, uh, noting our picture over here, part of the reason that we tend to see varying colors is because we also have varying thicknesses. So as the thickness of that oil changed, the color that would reflect off of that would also change. Also notice the question asks for the minimum thickness. Um, larger thicknesses for this would also work. So for instance, we could replace this with one and a half or two and a half or three and a half to get larger values if we needed to. But the smallest one would be obtained at M equals one half and give us an answer of 79 nanometers as the thickness of the oil.